Hello, everyone. This is Southern Mouth Whisper. I hope you all are doing well today. I hope you'll forgive me. I was 20 minutes in and almost finished with this video when somebody called me and it ended the video. So this is the third time that I've tried to do this video. Um, but this time I had to put the air conditioner on. It got really hot in here. But hopefully it drowns out the traffic sounds. So I, um, I don't know if you guys mind the air conditioner sounds or not. Hopefully not too much. I'm also going to be chewing some gum, not obnoxiously or anything, but I was, I had some free time. Uh, I went to the doctor today to, for a checkup on my bite that I had, and he said it looked good, that it looked like it was draining okay, you know, because when it's infected, you know, so uh, it feels better now that it hasn't. But uh, he put me out of work until Thursday. So I had a little bit of free time. And I was going through my mom's bag of pictures. I don't know if you guys have that in your house or not. But she has a big bag of pictures from my childhood, teenage years, like, you name it, old pictures, they're all in that bag. So, I was going through them today, and I thought I might do another picture show and tell video. I really enjoy picture show and tells, or memorabilia show and tells, like a Diary of a Millennial ASMR just released a Y2K um, memorabilia show and tell last night that put me to sleep for the first time in days so thank you thank you thank you and ASMR love is also a favorite one of mine when it comes to um, memorabilia show and tells so let's get started and let's hope that nothing else uh, happens to mess up our video so, this is a picture of me, it's, it was July 4th, 2007, so I was 16, and long story short, I had this huge crush on one of the cool kids that sat in the back of the bus that I told you guys about, I had a huge crush on him. And it was kind of sick of me because he had been with my best friend Alexis as well. And he, let's just say, I can do a whole story time on him because he put me in therapy. He used me. Let's just say that. But anyways, I had this huge crush on him. And he got a girlfriend. Well, his name is Brandon, by the way. And he got a girlfriend. And on July 4th, I was supposed to meet him at the VFW where we were going to watch the fireworks. And he brought his girlfriend. And, yeah, I guess he just thought that I was, excuse my language, cock blocking them or being a third wheel because we were all walking and he goes, hey, look, there's Aaron from high school. And uh, so Aaron started walking around with us too. And we were like checking out the school buses and stuff. And, and then Brandon was like, uh, we're actually gonna leave and go to so-and-so's house and uh, you know, do whatever they were gonna do for July 4th which left us, which left me and Aaron, and I was 16, and I really just wanted a boyfriend, and 
he was, poor thing, he was maybe 120 pounds soaking wet and five, six. I'm six one and I've always been, been big boned no matter what. And he was, he was scrawny, but we were sitting down and he was just like, you're really pretty. He said, will you be my girlfriend? So I was like, sure. And then he asked me to go to the movie theater with him and his grandparents the next day to see Ratatouille. He, he was raised by his grandparents because um, his dad committed suicide when he was a baby. And his mom just couldn't take care of him. So he was raised by his grandparents. And so I was so excited about having a boyfriend. I went up to my parents. I was like, look, it's my boyfriend Aaron. Like pointed him out like he was something in a store or something. Like I was, I wanted a boyfriend so bad. And I didn't really, I didn't really see it working out as long as it did. But I was with Aaron for two and a half years engaged as well that was Aaron was my fiance that I talked to you guys about here's another good picture of us my uh, niece had just been born Sarah uh, she's Stuart's little girl well she's not so little anymore she's 16 but um, she had just been born and my brother's mom was hosting a little get-together and I brought Aaron along with me, with me and my mom and dad. And so, there's Aaron. And me, and Sarah, my niece, and Sean, my nephew, my oldest nephew, who's about to turn 21. He was, how old was he in this picture? Six? I remember showing these pictures. I still talk to Brandon all the time. And I was like showing him these pictures and we would write notes back and forth um, as friends, you know. And he was like, oh, I can see you guys having a family one day the way y'all look. Um, it was like I wanted to make him jealous or something. It was, I was messed up, you guys. Okay, I was messed up. And then this is actually uh, from the beach trip where he, where Aaron proposed in 2008. So I was 17. I look at Selena in the back swimming in the ocean. He was really sweet, though. I will say that about Aaron. Um, one of the last things my ex said to me, you know, when he got in that big fight with my parents, he said, no wonder Aaron left you. Like, okay, I'm, I'll, I'm pretty sure I left him, but like, okay, that was almost 20 years ago. You think you're going to hurt me by saying that, but you're not. Um, I will say that when we stopped talking just, just as friends, it really did hurt. It really did. Because he was one of those people that was just there for me if I needed him. makes me think of this other person you know you you open your heart to somebody not romantically and you tell them things and you open up to them because I don't open up to a lot of people um, and then they just and that's been bothering me the last few weeks. 
I'm not gonna lie. But Aaron was just one of those people that you could open up to. And he knew exactly what to say, exactly what to do to make you feel 100% better. He was a cute kid. He was actually a cute kid. was airing. This is, uh, what year was this? I think I was six years old. And this is the first best friend that I ever had. Her name was Mariah. Sorry, I'm trying to get it to where, okay, there you go. I love this picture because my mom was trying to take it before the ship went, you know, bye-bye. So she was like, girls, stand in front, you know, get together, let's take a picture. But she was my first real best friend. And her name was Mariah. I love this picture. It's... Nineteen ninety eight, October nineteen ninety eight, and it was Halloween, and my brother Grant was dressed up as God knows Monkey Man or something. There's me, there's my dad in the background, and there is the zombie that we used to make every year for Halloween. And this is the same exact house that I'm living in right now. It looks so. Looks so different. That's crazy. This nurse is the first person that I remember talking to me after I woke up from that coma when I was 13. And I just remember her being so sweet. And so that I can't remember her name. Let's see if I can read her name tag, hold on. Yeah, it's too far away. Julie, I think it says Julie. This bear, my best friend Missy had given to me before I went into the hospital. But yeah, I told you guys, I had a breathing tube and everything. I was semi-conscious when this picture was taken. I was 13. But I remember that nurse being so sweet. She was like, we're waking you up from the sedation. Just try to keep calm. Uh, we've untied your, uh, because they had me restrained too. And she said, just try to stay calm. Just know you have a breathing tube in, you know, just, and I was like, okay, okay. I remember nodding my head, okay. Oh my goodness, okay. Okay, this was 1999. So I was eight years old, and this is the goat that we got. His name was Billy. I am so mad when my cousin redid this plantation where my house is, he cut down this dogwood tree that I loved for years and he cut it down. I, mm. I remember I was trying to climb that tree one day and I fell and I, my back was against the tree and I slid all the way down. But still, but yes, that is Billy, the goat that we had in the house as a pet. Like how, how country can you get? That's Billy. This 
is a really good picture of my aunt. This is my uh, mother's sister, youngest sister, I think. This is my aunt Letha. It's a really pretty picture of her. This is the woman that my mom was with when I had to call her about Joe. And I thank God for that because I'll, I will explain. I think there's another picture of her in here and I'll explain why that I was glad that she was with her. Don't she look so much like my mother? They all look so much alike because they all look like my grandma. This is the picture of our truck that we moved down to Virginia with from the beach when we moved that my parents got in a wreck in. They got hit almost head on and I am shocked that like they didn't get hurt. They had a little few bruises, but um, from what they told me, uh, my dad had been drinking, and they were just going to go right down the road and get some hot dog buns because they had made hot dogs, and my grandmother, my mom's mom, was living with us at the time, and from what they told me, they had this really big blind spot at the end of their driveway. They don't have it anymore. But my dad was, you know, looking both ways and he saw this truck racing down the road about maybe half a mile away from him. And he was like, well, he's gotta slow down. So he pulled out real quick and found out real quick that that person was not gonna slow down. There's my dad. My grandma said it sounded like a bomb had gone off. She said that's how loud it was. I was at school at the time. Man. That would have sucked that they had been killed. That would have really sucked. Here's a really good picture of my grandparents, 1989. This is uh, my grandma and my grandpa Brawley. It's my parents, I mean my dad's parents. That's Doris and that's Douglas. My dad is named after him. His name is Douglas too, but he goes by my. That's the grandma that passed away recently. I just love that picture. It's a prime example of staying with someone because you love them, you know, that you go through anything, you know. But they really loved each other. They really did love each other. They had ch three children together and they loved each other so much. I love this picture of my mom. I don't know what year this yet this is, but for one thing I love her sunglasses and I love that it's during low tide at the beach. I love her shirt. I just think she looks so pretty. me. This is 2008, so I was 17. And, oh, no, that's not my, okay, I was engaged yet. But, um, I was working at Food Line at the time, and we were dressing up for Halloween. 
So my dad had recently acquired an Elvis mask. So I bought everything that would go with the mask. And at the time I had a guitar. I wanted to learn to play the guitar so freaking bad, you guys. But I didn't have anybody to show me. Like, I'm pretty sure all my brothers knew how to play guitar. And nobody would show me how to play. They were like, just read the sheet music or... You know, well, we didn't have YouTube then, so, like, I wanted to play so bad, though. I wanted to play so freaking bad. So, they even bought me a guitar. Oh, my goodness. Dressed up as Elvis. <laughs> this is the first dog that I ever really remember having, I know we had a little uh, bulldog named Tina when I was a baby, but this is the first dog that I ever remember having when I was five, and her name was Peppy, and she was a cutie. We called her uh, Peppy Pepperoni, and she liked to run away a lot. When she was nine and we were living here, she ran away and never came back. She was such a sweetie. Okay. This is a picture of my grandfather and my grandmother, Seagraves. So that's my mom's parents. This little cutie is my cousin Matthew and this little other cutie is my cousin Stephanie this is my Aunt Letha's asshole first husband oh my gosh what was his name he even had an asshole name hold on hold on hold on Gary he treated my aunt so bad so bad and then funny story okay so, I got a funny story for you guys. An actually sweet story. He, my, okay, so first let me tell you everybody that's in the picture. That's uh, asshole Gary, my Aunt Letha, and my Uncle Brian. My mom has five brothers and sisters combined. But, a really cool story about my Aunt Letha, other than this sad one that I'm about to tell you. She, I forget, uh, but they were at Gary's uncle's house for some reason. And Gary reared back like he was going to punch my Aunt Letha. And my, um, his uncle stepped between them and said, you will not hit her around me. You will not treat her that way around me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Um, that was my uncle. Um, oh my god. Stop it. My memory's gotten so bad. Aunt Letha and uncle. Oh my lord. It's, oh man. I can't believe I'm Yes, Bob. They actually, my Aunt Letha, after she divorced uh, Gary, of course, fell in love with my uncle that day because he was the only one that stood up for her. And they actually ended up falling in love and being married for a long time before he passed away. My Uncle Bob was a very special man. He taught me how to play um, pool. They, my Aunt Letha had this outhouse where there was a pool table. And he taught me how to play pool. But I just thought that was so cool that he stood between my aunt and her then husband and told him, you are not going to hit her 
around me. Like, it was her savior. It was her knight in shine armor. Oh, God. You can't write this, I swear to God. You can't. I know a lot of people are going to be like, it was his uncle, but... And he was a pretty good amount older than her, but I don't care. They loved each other so much. And then the sad story I'm about to tell you is my cousin Stephanie, I mentioned her in my core memories, was killed in a car accident when she was 27. She was actually reported missing for almost a week and they found her car down an embankment and she had unfortunately uh, passed away and then my cousin Matthew was never the same after that I remember seeing him at her funeral and just thinking to myself man I am so worried about him and then a few years ago, I got the call that he had committed suicide. So my aunt lost both of her children in tragic ways. And that's why I am kind of glad that she was with my mother because I couldn't be there for her, even though I wanted to be. I should have drove down that night and told her person to person. I had somebody behind me saying, you can't call out work now. <sighs> okay. Sorry. Excuse me. But she was there in the car with my mother when she got the news. And I'm so grateful for that because she knew exactly what to do to calm my mom down. I thank God for that, I really do. But that, that's a great picture. I love that picture. This is a picture of my Uncle Brian. And the reason that I know is because he looks just like my cousin Mark. His son looks just like him. But like I said, they all look alike. This is when I got the Backstreet Boys cassette tape for Christmas. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I was really freaking excited. Look at that smile. You can't fake that. Which one was it? Millennial? I think Millennium. Whichever one that had the uh, I Want That Way so called. I listened to that tape all night long. I was so excited. This is my baby. This is Bunny. She was in, uh, I showed you guys a long time ago of my dog, Buddy, and he actually mated with my uncle's dog, um, snowy and then <laughs> here comes that country again one of the puppies from that litter got snowy pregnant again <laughs> little buddy got her pregnant again and that's where bunny came from does she not look like a chihuahua to you guys Snowy and Buddy were not Chihuahuas, they were Terriers. I think Snowy was a Maltese. <laughs> but she looks like a Chihuahua. <laughs> she, she didn't have a tail, as you can see. So when she got, got excited, she would shake her butt. Ooh, but when she got older, she mean. Like, I remember my cousin Matthew, the one that passed away, telling me, I don't like that dog. That dog don't like me. She tried to bite me. Um, because when we moved, at one point, we gave her to my Aunt Letha. And she took care of Bunny until the end of her life. She had uh, 
Bunny had a seizure when she was 13 and passed away in my Aunt Letha's arms. She took really good care of her. Another beach trip. This is the family beach trip that we took. I was 14, so let's see. There's my dad. There's me. There's my brother's stepdad, Gabriel, Mikey, and Grant. We had a really good time during that trip. That was a really fun trip. Such a great picture. Here's a picture of me at the beach in Surfside, my first day of school. And my mom wanted to show a picture of how tall the uh, banana tree had gotten. So I was already tall, <laughs> pretty tall for my age. But look how excited I was. I was freaking excited. I had my Esmeralda uh, backpack with my checks for lunch in it, my little pencils and pens, and I thought I was hot shit. I can't, rem I can't tell what is on my shirt, but I loved that backpack. If you guys could find that backpack for me on eBay or something, let me know and I will buy it. I would kill to have that backpack and I remember exactly how it looked. It just had a picture of her, of Esmeralda's face on it and I loved it. It's going to be a longer video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is my best friend Alexis in the middle. And me, this was her graduation party. We had a really good time that day. She had like a little luau party. I was always so jealous of her red hair. But yes, that is my best friend. Her and Danielle, around the same time, I became best friends with. You would, I think. I told you early in the video about Brandon, right? He had dated her, and you would think, oh, they would never get along, her and Alexis, if they dated the same guy. I didn't really date him. I just, um, yeah, let's not get into that. I'll do a story time if you guys want me to. But, uh, but no, like, I started talking to her. I was like, I actually really like this girl. And so, we've been best friends ever since. This is a picture of me when my mom got my modeling photos done. I was seven years old, and I love these overalls. It has uh, uh, Donald, Daffy, and Mickey and Minnie on it, and they're blue. I look really cute. I almost got the same hairstyle. Right after these pictures were taken, my mom took me to the hairdresser and she told her, give her a summer cut. That biatch cut all my hair off. I look like a boy going to school. Like I'm surprised she didn't give me like a crew cut or like a mullet. She cut off all that hair, all that beautiful hair cut off. I love it. I love this picture. I love my, yeah, my mom took this picture because during this time, me and my brothers, Gabe and Grant, we didn't get along. We picked on each other all the time. But this is one of those moments that you can just tell underneath it all, we really loved each other as only a brother and sister can do. Grant was 12 and I was seven. I just think that's a really sweet picture of us. I love my bubba. I love all my bubbas. Oh my goodness. So I told you guys, when we first lived here, our neighbor across the street had a, a tuxedo cat. 
and he would come over here all the time. So he spent half his time here and then half his time across the street. But he was also a tuxedo cat. His name was Chauncey. This was during Christmas. There's a funny memory too. We had come back from the beach and we saw this dead cat in the road and my mom thought it was Chauncey. And it, why is my teeth so shiny? I'm sorry. Okay, all right, sorry. Anyways, so she thought it was Chauncey. So she took a box and went and shoveled the dead carcass of that cat out of the road and put it into the box. And while she was gone, me and my dad were on the porch and this damn cat popped his head around the corner like, where the hell have you guys been? It was the wrong cat. <laughs> but my mom was so happy. I remember the neighbor across the street coming over and she was like, can we keep him? And he was like, well, he's pretty much yours anyways. He couldn't really say yes. But I just think it's funny that now I have Journey, and he's a tuxedo cat. And then my grandma had a cat that she really loved. It was her first cat, and that was a tuxedo cat as well. I feel like I'm living my grandma's life. Okay, let's do one more. This <laughs> is another beach shirt. And this, I think I was 14, 15. Hold on, this is before or after my surgery. This was before. I was 12. This was before my surgery. I might have been 13. This might have been the year I had my surgery. I don't know. Anywho, uh, we decided to take my mom's Aunt June with us because she'd never been to the beach before. And my Aunt June was, or my great Aunt June was my grandmother's sister. And so uh, we decided we were going to take her with us because she'd never seen the ocean before. Or it'd been a while since she saw the ocean. And then she talked my mom into also taking this girl with us. She said, Alicia has never seen the ocean before and she never gets out of West Virginia, and there's nothing to do around here. And every time I talk about it, she says she's so jealous that I get to go. So, against our better judgment, we took her to. This girl almost got punched in the face. Let's just say that. She, I mean, does she look happy to be there to you? Like, look how happy I, I am, and I've seen the beach a hundred times. But she's a, you know, oh my gosh. Well, first night there, she called her parents, and she started crying, saying that she missed her mom and dad. And then they both took control of the TV in the living room. And I remember one day, I was tired of seeing country music. It was, I, I remember what channel it was on. It was country music channel. And I decided to switch it. I was like, I'm tired of this. And so I switched it. And she was, Alicia was like, you know, why'd you switch it? We were listening to music. Oh, and then uh, one night, um, my dad said something that really upset me. And I thought nobody could see because I was behind everybody. But apparently she saw, but I flipped them off. And that night, we were in, a, of course, I had to share a room with her. It was a room with two twin beds. And I had to share that room with her. And she was like, okay, we need to get something straight. I have some new rules for you. I was like, okay, I'm listening. She was like, uh, for one, when we're watching the TV, you don't just come in and take the controller and control the controller. And another thing, 
is all this vulgar middle finger stuff. That needs to go. Mm -mm, I don't stand for that type stuff. And then by the end of those rules, I told her, I said, if you want to go, go. I said, my parents got this vacation house. We invited you out of the goodness of our hearts. I said, if you want to go, go. And she, this bitch actually jumped up and started packing her bags and she was like if I call my parents right now they could be here in five minutes I was like but she made it I mean she made it the whole week uh, but I thought it was the weirdest thing um, when she saw her dad for the first time she hugged him and wrapped her legs around him and was like crying like they've been away from each other for months or something. Oh my lord, this girl. You think I'm country. This girl is like all she wanted to do. Like I wanted to do stuff. I said, let's go swimming in the ocean. Let's let's go Broadway. Let's let's do something fun. And all she wanted to do the whole time was pick seashells. I was like, okay, I've never been so freaking bored in my life. So we learned real quick to never invite anybody with us ever again. Yeah, her name was Alicia. And my Aunt June actually passed away about 11 years ago. But the last I'd heard was that Alicia had two kids and three third on the way, that she was on drugs and unemployed and 300 pounds. You, you just always know that about a person. When you meet them, you're like, this person is going to end up being a menace to society. And your girl was right. Like, oh my gosh. I just thought I'd end this video a little funny story of the first fight I almost got into with someone. Um, oh, anyways. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will try to talk to you guys again sometime this week. Um, I had to pick up a couple days to make up for the hours that I've lost this week, so we'll see. But I love you guys. I'll be talking to you soon.